Hey guys, welcome to another IGCSE Chemistry Revision video. Today we're going to be going through two topics. We're going to be going through sulfur and also carbonate. So without further ado, have a quick look at the syllabus content. It's not a long topic for either of these. Uh, and we'll begin the video. So the sources of sulfur is found mainly in underground sulfur beds in the USA, Mexico, and Poland. Natural gas and petroleum contain a moderate amount of sulfur compounds, these have to be removed and are also an important source of sulfur. Uh, metal sulfides occur as ores and one example of this is zinc blend and you should know of this already in terms of the extraction of metals and if you don't know that you should go and revise that as well because they tend to ask you a lot about that in exams. So when we take a look at sulfur dioxide, which is basically an oxide of sulfur, sulfur dioxide is mainly used in the contact process. And the contact process is a fancy word for the process that manufactures sulfuric acid. And you'll find sulfuric acid in a lot of different places and has a lot of different uses that we will be going through later on. But for the sake of your sort of experience and things like that, you would have found sulfuric acid widely spread in, in your laboratory rooms and things like that, and it is an example of a strong acid. Uh, sulfur dioxide is also used in bleach uh, in the manufacture of paper from wood pulp and as a preservative as well for killing bacteria in food. So we talked about sulfur dioxide being used in the contact process, which is the process that makes sulfur dioxide. So let's just go through the steps because this is quite important. And if they're going to be asking you any sort of question about sulfur, generally it would be about the contact process. Sulfur is basically burnt in air to form sulfur dioxide. Simple. Sulfur plus oxygen gives you sulfur dioxide. This is then mixed with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. And this is important here that this is an equilibrium. Uh, so we've got the double arrow suggesting that it's got the forward reaction and also the backward reaction as well. Uh, but either way, sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen and you form sulfur trioxide as, as the product. So the reaction between sulfur trioxide and water inherently produces sulfuric acid. Unfortunately, this doesn't, well this isn't exactly what we do. Um, in the contact process despite the fact that it works because this reaction between sulfur trioxide and water is very very violent and explosive and so you can't really do that to make sulfuric acid instead what you do is basically add sulfur trioxide uh, you dissolve that or add it into sulfuric acid or concentrated sulfuric acid and we produce something called oleum so here's the reaction here you've got sulfur trioxide instead of just putting it straight into water you put it into concentrated sulfuric acid H2SO4, and what you get is this compound here, H2S2O7, which is oleum, and you do need to know that. And what you then do is add oleum to water, and that will give you two moles of sulfuric acid, as the last equation shows you here. Uh, so that's a roundabout way of doing things to make sulfuric acid, uh, because the reaction between sulfur trioxide and water is way too explosive to carry out in this procedure. Uh, there is a couple of things that you need to know uh, regarding this whole process and in terms of the conditions that is required because they like to ask you that as well. So the conditions are 400 to 450 degrees Celsius, uh, the pressures are between 1 to 2 atmospheres, and the catalyst that is used is vanadium 5 oxide. So the properties and uses of sulfuric acid, when we think about dilute sulfuric acid, uh, despite the fact that it's dilute, it's still a very strong acid and it's, well, it'll show characteristics of typical strong acids. And of course strong acids are acids that completely ionize in aqueous solution and uh, they have characteristic acid-like reactions, say with metals, with bases and whatnot. Uh, the general uses of dilute sulfuric acid would be to make fertilizers, treat metals and remove oxidation before painting, laboratory reagents that you find in your labs at school, acid and car batteries, dye, fiber and paint manufacture, all that sort of stuff uh, are fairly common uses. Uh, when we talk about concentrated sulfuric acid, the properties of course would again be that it's a strong acid, it's a very powerful dehydrating as, uh, agent, and it's a very powerful oxidizing agent as well. 
The users would be similarly to make detergents. Uh, it can be used as a catalyst, and it can also be used as a dehydrating agent. As we talked about above, one of the properties are that it is a dehydrating agent. So moving on to carbonates, um, a lot of this is focused on calcium oxide. And so the manufacture of calcium oxide is something that we'll have to talk about. So let's actually get some terminologies sort of uh, set first. So calcium carbonate, another word for that is limestone. So don't get confused if they use limestone in an exam because it simply means calcium carbonate. Now, calcium carbonate or limestone decomposes into calcium oxide, which is lime, and we've, we've actually seen this reaction before, uh, and it produces carbon dioxide in the process as well. So calcium carbonate uh, thermally decomposes to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And so another word for calcium oxide is actually lime. And so again, if they use lime in an examination, you have to just interpret that as calcium oxide. And so water can be added to calcium oxide to form calcium hydroxide. And this is actually called slaked lime. And you should be familiar with that as well. So calcium oxide added to water gives you calcium hydroxide. Um, note that in an aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide, we call that lime water. So calcium hydroxide itself the solid form is basically slaked lime. Now, if you were to put that into water to produce a solution of calcium hydroxide, that is called lime water. And lime water goes milky in the presence of carbon dioxide. And take a look at this equation here. You get calcium hydroxide reacting with carbon dioxide. You produce carb uh, calcium carbonate and water in the process. And the solution goes milky. So the uses of calcium compounds, calcium oxide, or again, lime, and calcium hydroxide are both used to treat acidic soils and neutralize acidic wastes because of their properties as bases. Calcium carbonate has uh, fairly uh, sort of various uses that, uh, that we see here. First of all, the manufacture of cements, the manufacture of glasses, in a blast furnace and in steel making to remove silicon oxide as slag to neutralize acidic soils and lakes caused by acid rain. All these sort of stuff are things, if not more things, that you can come up with as uses of calcium carbonate. So that wasn't too long of a topic for either one of those, uh, but it is still an important part of the syllabus. So. I hope this video helped. Uh, please visit www.freeexamacademy.com. I have written out basically the entire IGCSE chemistry syllabus. I will be moving on to physics very shortly. Uh, so check that out. Um, organic chemistry will come next in terms of video. Uh, so the next video I up upload on YouTube will be on organic chemistry. I know that a lot of you guys have been requesting that. So it will be up very, very shortly. Uh, also, if you guys haven't already, please join Patreon for exclusive past paper tutorials for both biology and chemistry. I've got six tutorials up for chemistry and there will be more coming as well for that, along with resources, PowerPoint slides, and all that sort of stuff that I use for my YouTube videos. They will all become available to you if you join me on Patreon. Otherwise, please like, share, and subscribe my videos, guys, because the more likes, the more shares you guys have on my videos, it gets ranked higher on YouTube. That means it gets more exposed more to other students that might, you know, that that might um, gain aid from, from the videos I upload on YouTube. So basically, thanks for all your support, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.